Acrotarchs are a form of microscopic fossil, which are known for over a billion years in Earth's history. They are quite diverse, and therefore the group is probably polyphyletic, representing a number of unrelated lineages that are simply classified together because they have organic materials in their cell walls and cannot be definitely identified with any biological group. They first appear in the Mesoproterozoic about 1.4 billion years ago and represent some of the earliest eukaryotic fossils. In the Neoproterozoic, they briefly increased in their diversity in the Tonian period but their diversity was uh, reduced greatly in the snowball earth uh, times of the cryogenian uh, period. These global glaciations had a great effect on the diversity of life which earth uh, could stand. Acrotark diversity in increased once again during the Ediacaran period and this was probably significant because at the same time the uh, early animals of the Ediacaran period were also increasing in their diversity, and arguably the uh, increase in the phytoplankton helped marine food chains, which included these early animals. Two great events in the history of life were the Cambrian explosion, in which there was a great increase in animal diversity, especially large animals, which had hard parts, which could then fossilize better. This was the time of the first arthropods, the first true mollusks, the first fish. And the great Ordovician biodiversification event in the following period. The acrotarchs greatly increased their diversity during the Cambrian. And once again, it seems as if the diversification of the acrotarchs was linked to that of these Cambrian animals, and perhaps in multiple ways. Perhaps not only were uh, these elements of the plankton serving as food sources, allowing these animals to become more diverse, but perhaps elements of the plankton had to diversify uh, to deal with uh, the uh, evolution of new filter feeders which were preying on them. Acrotarchs reached their greatest diversity in the Ordovician period. In many Paleozoic rocks, acrotarchs are the most diverse uh, form of microscopic fossil. During the mid-Paleozoic era in the Devonian period, the supercontinent Pangaea was beginning to form as the southern supercontinent Gondwana was beginning to fuse with that of the northern continent which would greatly affect ocean currents as the seaway which separated these two supercontinents would have been lost. There is a mass extinction at the end of the Devonian period and the Acrotark populations were decimated. Never again would their diversity be uh, the same and uh, they are now minor components of the phytoplankton for the remainder of uh, the Paleozoic. Some have proposed a quote phytoplankton blackout where for tens of millions of years uh, there would have been significantly less uh, in the way of phytoplankton. Although this is difficult to say conclusively since uh, not all or perhaps not even the majority of the phytoplankton would be forming the cysts which form these acrotarchs. Uh, this is not representative of all phytoplankton, just those which form harder cysts. And then there is also smaller plankton, the picoplankton, um, and then also the cyanobacteria, uh, which would have contributed as well. And so the loss of acrotarchs uh, would not necessarily have meant that there was a phytoplankton um, blackout. There was another mass extinction at the end of the Permian uh, period and another in the Triassic. And this marks the end of the Acrotarchs. Uh, and so uh, the last of uh, the species uh, were lost as uh, the end Permian extinction event became the early Triassic. And then starting in the late Triassic, 
the uh, groups uh, which form the phytoplankton of today began to be known. Dinoflagellates can first definitely be identified in the fossil record in uh, the late Triassic uh, with diatoms and other uh, forms of uh, plankton which form uh, hard uh, shells around themselves and uh, known from the Jurassic period.